outfit on hand at the uh, Las Vegas Hilton Theater, and they are awaiting our main event, William Joppe versus Roberto Duran for the WBA Middleweight Championship. Well, William Joppe may be a world middleweight champion, but he keeps uh, himself grounded by moonlighting in a profession that you'd never expect him to be in. For as you will see, Joppe is trying not only to clean up inside the ring, but outside the ring as well. Now the two-time WBA middleweight champion, William Joppe Jr. I feel that I'm still the same before I was world champion. You know, of course, I don't go out here wearing big diamond rings or big fancy cars, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I gotta stay what got me there, you know? I gotta do the same things I was doing before I was world champion. Even after winning the WBA middleweight title for the second time, William Joppy Jr. refuses to dramatically change his lifestyle nor alter his daily routine. Every day after training, the WBA champion moves from the painful to the pain filled. Go to work. What I like about this, what I like about watching clean the windows is, I like doing them, and then I like sitting back looking at my work, how I clean the windows up. I look at how dirty they were before, and when I'm finished, I see how clean they are. Like a job like this, this here, this, I do inside and out. This, this is a $33 job, inside and out. I ain't like boxing, though. You mess up in boxing, you might, not, you might not get a chance again. I mess up on the window, I can do it over. In boxing, you got to take advantage of the first time, because you don't know if you're going to get a chance again. Good luck in the next fight, man. All uh, right, thanks. Give me six. But whether Joppy is cleaning windows or training to clean up in the ring, he is obsessed with becoming the first in 11 years to unify the middleweight division. But before he can do so, tonight he must beat and beat decisively one of boxing's foremost living legends, Roberto Duran. You know, I look at his old tapes, he was a tough guy. He might, just like I said, he might not be as fast, but he's still clever and smart. So I have to watch myself at all times. I'm 27. He's old enough to be my father. So I'm going to have to, uh, you know, beat him in press. Now people can look at me and say, oh, that's a guy that retired with Bird Duran. Well, that's my goal. You know, this should be his last fight. Well, you got to admire the work ethic of the champion, William Joppe. But Duran, the sentimental favorite here at the age of 47, can Roberto Duran turn back the clock one more time? You're asking me? Absolutely not. I don't, I've never seen any fighter turn back the clock to what he was. His former grand. Do you remember? This man was one of the giants. He has a colossal heart, and about all that's left of Duran right now is that colossal heart. I'm scared of him hurting himself, as I am all fighters who fight too long. I know all too well what happens to them at the end of their lives after 50 and 60. So I'm not happy to be here. I'm not happy to see this. And I hope Roberto gets out of this without uh, any tragedy. We're going to see the fight that Roberto always puts up. Very brave and as much as he can bring. But he can't bring reflexes. And Joppy's got fast reflexes. Well, can Roberto Duran at this stage of his career handle the speed, the deceptive speed of a, of a William Joppy? Bobby Chez, let's get your keys to victory for both fighters. Well, Joppy's an excellent boxer, puncher, and counter puncher. He also keeps his hands up tight in defense. When he counters, he is very effective. Here you see he's fighting Julio Cesar Green in the rematch. Takes a right hand, comes around Green's guard. You see his hands are up high. He wants to watch and make sure he's not getting hit. Then he steps in with a stiff left hand, and he hurts Green. He buckles his legs. There's the right and the left quick. A good hand speed is going to be key. He's looking in Green's eyes now, and he believes he's hurt. He's also a very good finisher, Steve. He's going to come in behind the jab, not like Robert Allen's. This is more of a punishing jab, more of a hurt you get the points jab, and big right hands. He loves to set up that right hand. He works Green with the jab. There's the right hand on top of the head. Then he'll work the body, something he has to do against Duran. There he did with Green, only to the point that Green had a hold to survive. Duran, what can you say? A legend so many years. You'll see against Camacho, he tries to be effective up top, but he's just too slow. Years have taken their toll. He throws a nice one-two down the middle, but they hit nothing. He then goes directly to the body with three, four, five shots, stays exclusively to the body. Watch the one-two does nothing. Then he goes to the body, not clean, but a couple of good body shots got in. He resets himself. Now watch the difference in his second attempt at that one-two to the chin of Camacho. Watch how cleanly they land. He needs to use this type of smarts and experience, the one-two bang, bang. 
right on the money, Steve. The experience, this is something he has to do. He's going to win. He's got to be smart, conserve his energy, use his experience. Well, Bobby, a 47-year-old Roberto Duran is a cinch for the Boxing Hall of Fame. But tonight, after 30 years, over 100 victories and five world titles, will we be witnessing his last hurrah, or will he become the oldest to win a world championship in boxing history? William Joppy emphatically believes that he will be the one to permanently retire this man, known as Hands of Stone, who is also fighting the Hands of Time. As we take a look at the five-time world champion, Roberto Duran, one of the all-time greats, He's had almost as many world title fights, 21, as Joppy's had fights, 27. Always a crowd favorite, as you'll hear. He's come out of retirement six times. At one point, he said 96 fights would be it. Then 100. It's now at 114. His last upset nearly a 10 years ago over Iran Barkley for the middleweight belt, the oldest to win that title at almost 38. His fans are out in full force. But I got to say, in all due respect, as I said on the opening, he is one of the legends of boxing, but it is difficult to sit here and pretend to justify this fight. What could he possibly have left? I can't. He doesn't have much left. What he has left is a huge debt of $300,000 that he has to pay off. This fight pays him two hundred and fifty, dollars and I predict win, lose, or draw, he'll stick around for another year. That's the way Roberto is, and maybe a year after that. Well, I did ask that question of Joppy yesterday, and he said without hesitation, it's his punch. That's what he's got left. Duran does have 70 KOs. He also has a chin, and he has a big heart. And of course, Ferdy, you worked his corner in his heyday, so you know. I worked his corner when I saw I was a determined man. You know how he got that hands of stone? He actually knocked out a horse when he was a kid in Panama. He actually knocked out a horse like that movie, uh, Blazing Saddles. Remember Mongo's Punch? Well, after that, they called him Hands of Stone, and he, he maintained the reputation because of the, the impressive number of knockouts. I, I, uh, I can't tell you how thrilling it was to work with him, and I can't tell you how sad I am that I'm here. Well, after saying no mas to Sugar Ray Leonard at age 29 and losing to Wilfred Benitez and Kirkland Lang, it looked like the end of the road for Duran. And then he beats Davey Moore for the junior middleweight title. And on and on and on. And William Joppy, the WBA middleweight champ, a 6-1 to one favorite, is very pumped. He says he's going for the kill. He feels he's in a no-win situation, that he can't go 12. He must win decisively. William Joppy versus Roberto Duran. The official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present our main event action at this time, we'd like your attention, please, for a solemn moment as we pause to recognize the loss of legendary boxing broadcaster Don Dunphy, who recently passed away. As one of the pioneers of calling fights on radio and television, Don Dunphy's voice became synonymous 
with big time boxing events for over five decades from Joe Lewis, Billy Kahn, to Ali Frazier, to Sugar Ray Leonard versus Thomas Hearns. He will also always be a role model of class and excellence in broadcasting to boxing announcers around the world. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we extend a boxing tribute of a 10 count, and we ask you to rise and remain silent as our timekeeper tolls 10 in honor of the voice of boxing, Don Dunphy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May God rest his soul. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Las Vegas Hilton in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Don King Productions in association with the Las Vegas Hilton. This main event is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, the President, Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Gilberto Mendoza, Jr., along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners, Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. James Nave, and Dr. Luther Mack, with the Executive Director, Mark Rettner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Charles Signorino, Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have Jane Broadfoot and James Cavan. Now introducing to you our judges. Scoring this bout from ringside, Dwayne Ford, Derek Milham, and Cesar Ramos. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you at this time the referee in charge of this bout, working in this his 108th world title bout, Joe Cortez. Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from and representing Los Chorrios Panama. He weighed in at a trim and ready 159 pounds with a record of 101 wins, 13 losses. He has 70 wins coming by way of knockout and tonight is making his 22nd appearance in a world title bout. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, boxing's legendary five-time world champion known as Hands of Stone, introducing one of boxing's all-time greats, Roberto Manos de Piedra Duran. And his opponent across the ring on my left, the defending world champion, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim, hailing from Lincoln Park, Maryland. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds even, his record, 25 wins, one loss, one draw, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. In his second reign as world champion, he is making the fourth defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBA middleweight champion of the world, introducing William Juppy. Once again, our referee in charge is Joe Cortez. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of action scheduled. All right, gentlemen. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Yeah, leave that regla in the camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Una pelea limpia. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Keep your punches up. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. All right, we're getting set for the WBA Middleweight Championship. The final words from Joe Cortez, William Joplin.
generally starts out fast and comes straight in. He can box or brawl, but chooses not to slug. His speed and movement could be Duran's undoing. Guy's been fighting longer than Joppy's been alive. How many can equal his longevity and accomplishments? The bell sounds for round one, and here we go. Joppy told us this may not be his toughest test, but it's his most important fight, obviously against a celebrity like Roberto Duran. Joppy said he will try to go inside, hoping, of course, to know when to get out. He'll try to give Duran lots of angles, look to tire Duran out, brawl with him. If he gets to the later rounds, that's the time to get brave. But he wants to end this with a KO. There's Joppy in the blue trunks. Duran started out right to the body, a la the old school fighters. Work, work that body, kill that body, the head will die. Joppy's going to try and stay outside box smart. He referred to the second uh, rematch with Sugar and Leonard, where he was just on the outside. Frustrating Duran, that's what he said he wants to do. But at the same time, he wants to take him out, so he can't do both. So. I think I think once he sees the opening, he's going to press on the, the uh, pedal. He's going to go all the way down and get this guy out of the reach. There you go. Good combination to the head by William Joppy. A straight right to the head by Joppy. You heard Duran pretty good with that. That's the same right hand that Hearns hit him with. Him. Duran answers back with a right hand of his own. This Roberto Duran has basically been a one and done type fighter. Not that many combinations or sustained flurries. He's been off balance a lot. Big difference in the way he fights these days. Well, he has no balance anymore. He hasn't got recruited to Paris. He's got to land that one punch and hope that the other guy doesn't hit him in return. Joppy's straight right hand is going to be key here tonight, fellas. He landed the first two far too easy. Duran's going to have to adjust. And he's too fast. You see those two, three punches, and he landed. Joppy with uppercuts to the head, very confident. Stepping right in from the start against Duran. And doing a job with that right hand. Doing a job. There's a straight right by William Joppy that connected. You know, unfortunately, I know it all too well when the mind says one thing, look out for that punch, and the body just can't get out of the way, and you're all of a sudden eating leather. You just go to the well so many times, Steve, and I just can't believe that at this level, with fighters that fight as well as William Joppin at Durant could really be competitive. He's getting killed with an uppercut inside, Bobby. While you were talking, he got hit about three uppercuts, which lifted his head. He can't keep that up. You, you can't take those uppercuts and not, not feel them. He's, he's getting hit by a lot of shots, is Duran. Besides just his age, he's gone up and blown up in weight over 200 pounds, many times up and down, up and down. He does serious damage and strain to his system every time he does that. A punishing first round. Face of Roberto Duran being pummeled here by Joppy. Joppy absolutely establishes himself. Great deal of speed and assurance. He is taking Roberto Duran apart. Combination to the head by Joppy just before the bell. As soon as he throws that body, that body shot, go on top of the right hand. You must go first with the right hand. But let's take on the other side, let's take what Joppy is doing to him in combinations. The left hook, the right hand, and all of a sudden, this Durant is becoming a, a picnic table for him. He's just eating his lunch. Duran sucking wind while Joppy has been standing for a while, very eager to get back into it. Duran was basically defenseless in that first round, and it continues here into round two. You know, the reaction time for Duran, you can see it's just not there. No. You can see him thinking, you can see him wanting to try things, but before he starts to make the move, Joppy's already compromised him. You know, it's really sad to watch. You know, and, and, and the thing is that, that Duran is so tough. In New York, when we did an interview before this fight the last time, it was canceled. I said, don't you understand you can get killed in the ring? And he said to me, actually said to me, I'd rather die in a ring than die in a hospital. I've been lived my whole life in the ring. I wouldn't mind. And I said, don't say that. <laughs> Please don't say that. 
you know, it's it's a Warriors mentality to think that way, but it's just not that smart. And it's not that smart of us to let him do that. Originally, this fight was set for Madison Square Garden, June 6, underneath Holyfield back in one day, which had to be canceled the day before the fight. When I can one day, he's diagnosed with hepatitis B. Oh. Problems continue for Duran. And they're not small ones, and they're multiple problems because Joppy is punching in bunches. Those right uppercuts doing damage by Joppy to the to the face of Duran again. It's still not the best place for Joppy to be, even though he's effective because of the hand speed, the, the strength, and the youth. It's just still not the best place for him to be. Outside, he's so much more effective. Joppy uh, almost left hook the referee. Actually, I thought he was going to sneak the ranch shot. Huh? Yeah, it, they, they had bumped heads, and he said, "Don't, let's not bump heads." He almost thought it was ready to start fighting. There's that quick, accurate jab by William Joppy that has been so effective over the years. And now Durant's tasting it. I think the uppercut's what's killing Durant right here. The uppercut is continuous. Every round is landing. Six uppercuts this round alone have connected. It's a nice uppercut of Roberto Durant with a left hook to follow. Well, see. As Freddie talked about a minute ago, there are not punches and punches, but two and three at a time maximum. Oh, a wicked left hook by William Joppy to the, to the face of Duran. And tattooing Duran with punches. He goes to the body and all of a sudden the head is wide open. There's another left hook by Joppy. He's showing uh, just about the entire arsenal here. Uppercuts, jabs, hooks. There's a left hook that staggers Duran momentarily. Yeah, well, oh, right, 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 you can see the, the uh, gas just going out of Duran. He's old. He can't take this kind of punishment. And he you can't know. take this kind of pace at this age. I know that the, the punishment of the pace, Bobby, that's that's the answer right there. Can't do it. Yeah. Every time you see an old boxer go, a guy said, with my experience, I'll, I'll neutralize. You can't neutralize reflexes. The name of boxing is reflexes. Let's take a look at these these punches clubbing left hand that Joppy just puts in there. You see, look look at Roberto just fall over. I mean, he can't even keep his balance. That was a hard punch at Atlanta, a little bit lower. It could have been to the end of the fight. He, he is just tattooing Durant. Again, Joppy standing between rounds. Durant just trying to get as much rest as humanly possible. Round three begins with Durant on the attack, the crowd rising to the occasion every time Durant even shows a semblance of anything. Of course, as we said, he's the sentimental favorite. Oh, we got, we got, we got. Not to mention a lot of Hispanics in the crowd. Well, I never thought I'd see a fighter come back from that nomas nomas disgrace the way he did, but he did. He's captured the hearts of everybody in boxing, uh, whether it's Latino or, or white, American or white or whatever. They all love Robert Durant. And we can even hear you getting choked up as you say that. Yeah, so I'm a lot of you know, it's just it's it's so heartbreaking for me as a fighter, a former fighter, to sit here and watch a fighter who in his heyday at 135 may have been the best we've ever seen of any weight to, to force himself and just be ha you know have to fight at this kind at this level and not be able to function. Unfortunately, that's that's a function of great fighters. They don't know when they're over. I saw it happen to Joe Lewis, I saw it happen to Sugar Ray Robinson, and the greatest of all Muhammad Ali. I saw it happen to him too close. There's that beautiful jab doubling up by William Joppy, peppering to the face of Duran. The youthful speed. Duran is determined, though. He is keeping the pressure on himself, forcing the fight, forcing the pace, trying to stay inside. But Joppy's just too quick, too accurate. Right cross and a right co uh, left combination by Joppy to the head of. There's the left jab again by Joppy. Oh, what a right hand, and that staggers Duran. Joppy jumps on Duran now, trying to end it here in the third. 
I'm sure this referee wants his fans to stop over. this. He's going to stop this if it continues. A defenseless Duran taking it. What's Cortez waiting for? What's Cortez waiting for? Look at this pressure by Jeffy. Joe Cortez watching. What's he watching? There's been nothing back from Duran. Nothing. He's just taking it like a heavy bag. Again, Roberto Duran refusing to buckle underneath that assault by William Joppy, who just continues. Upstairs, upstairs. Oh, what a right hand by Joppy to the head of Duran. And even as hurt as he is two or three times, Jop, uh, Duran just put his hands down, and there, Joppy, they hit him again. Joe Cortez apparently giving Roberto Duran every chance because of his legendary status. Unfortunately, that doesn't give his brain every chance, and that's what we're talking about here. Permanent damage. He should not allow this to continue. Oh, a straight right hand Come by Chuppie that rocks Duran. Duran again in all kinds of trouble. No defense whatsoever. I think it's just about to be stopped. Joe Cortez has seen enough. Duran's getting destroyed. And finally, Joe Cortez has stopped the fight. What a miserable performance by Joe Cortez. What a miserable performance by a referee who knows he's got a legend in front of him, who has no chance to win, who's taken a big shellacking. That was not necessary. Unofficially 254 of round three. The end for Duran. And William Joppy, still the WBA middleweight champion, and he does it in most convincing fashion as he goes over to console Duran. And will you never learn in boxing? Well, Joppy did what he set out to do, win decisively. And Joppy did what he should have done. He was in there to win. There was nothing wrong with what Joppy did. What was wrong was letting go that long by Cortez. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look when Duran first got in trouble. Although when he first got in trouble was when he signed his contract. But here you go. You, you're watching the pinpoint actors. That right hand right there. Now watch the action. See arms. Everything goes in, in uh, Duran. You can see that he was short circuited there. His whole brain said, whoops, I'm over. And now, now comes the onslaught. And this non-stop onslaught to remain for the rest of the round was totally unnecessary. This fight was over right here. We'll go to the end of the of, of this. And uh, look at that. I mean, there's no reason. There's no reason to allow a man who's got his hands down to continue. I mean, Roberto Duran doesn't deserve this kind of mayhem. Let's go to the end of the fight with Bobby. And in his prime, Roberto Duran laughs at most of these shots. But here he can't even put his, put his hands up. Look. He doesn't have his mental faculties. Right hand after right hand after left hook and uppercut. They're just so clean. And some of the shots aren't even that big. But Duran is 47 years old. 30 years of taking beatings. I don't care who you are, how tough you are, what you're made out of. This is not supposed to be. It's just too long. It's just too much. And unfortunately, he'll pay the price later on in life, as they all do. And that's what I regret. Well, for Roberto Duran, we can only hope that we've heard the words Uno Mus for the last time. Perhaps finally he will move on with his life while he's still in one piece and hang up the gloves, but uh, probably not. He told us he wants to fight one more year, no matter what happened here tonight. All right, let's get the official announcement right now from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of two minutes, 54 seconds. In round number three, our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout and still the WBA middleweight champion of the world, William Joppy. William Joppy retains his title. Duran, nothing left to prove. His record now 101 and 14, but please let it go. No must, Roberto. You know, for Joppy, this is a no win situation, Steve. He can't capture any of the thunder and lightning that was once Roberto Duran, and all he can do now is say, okay, I defended my title, it was an opportunity. It's over. All right, let's go up to Jim Gray in the ring right now. Post fight reaction. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm joined by everybody here. First, Roberto, in English, are you okay? Yeah, yes, okay, no problem. Two more, two more, me, 
Okay, heavyweight, too more heavy, you know. He's just down. He's too heavy for you. Yeah, right. Too heavy for you. But you were okay to continue. You're okay. Everything's okay yeah, inside. Yeah, okay. He no problem. Yo estaba viendo todo lo que estaba pasando. No, he says he was perfectly okay. He knew exactly where he was. He knew what was happening. But you realize you had no chance to win tonight, correct? Pero tú sabías que no tenías oportunidad de ganar esta noche. Bueno, todo todo cabe lo posible. No, everything's possible. Anything's possible. Roberto, will you continue? You're 47 years old. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to see you get right, hurt. Right, that's right. That's right. Was well, you going to yeah, continue? No, no, maybe not. You finished. Yeah, yeah. It's been a wonderful <laughs> career. No mas, no more? Right, that's right. <laughs> Congratulations. You've been a terrific. You've, you've thrilled us all over the all years. Right. Okay. And we hope that you're not hurt and, and that you live a long life. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Ruben, thank you. William, congratulations to you. What exactly, however, does it prove to beat a 47 year old man, even if he is a legend? Well, you know, this was an important fight to me uh, on the strength of um, getting my name, you know, having marketabilities for my name because. I mean, beating the 47-year-old, you know, I really had no win situation in this fight. If he had took me the distance, that would have made me look bad. I knocked him out. That's what everybody's saying. That's what I'm supposed to. I should have did it. You know what I mean? So, but being, I mean, he's a legend. I got that, that name on my uh, my roster now. So, um, it, there's got to be a twinge of sadness, however, with beating up a legend like that. A guy who was basically defenseless. Do you feel a little bit of sadness, even though you're a fighter and you yeah, want to win? Yeah, I do. I do. But you know, when he get in the ring, he took his physical to Dr. Pastor. This is my job. It's on me losing, taking food off my table. So whoever gets in the ring with me, I can't, you know, you can't really tell when I'm in the ring. But you know what? He's, he's a great man. I love him. I grew up watching him. You know, he done, he done made his mark. Now it's my time. What next for you now? Uh, mandatory, my number one, right? I love fighting my number yeah, one. Maybe yeah, one. Maybe so. Yeah, I might fight my number one. But, with, you know, whichever way the ball bounce, I'm ready. But I would like to uh, unify, you know, so they can show uh, who's the best middleweight. And I think they seen tonight with the best. Been saying that for a long time. We yeah, ever gonna yeah. get to it? Hey, uh, yeah, there you go right there. Right. We gonna get to it? Yeah. Absolutely. We gotta unify this middleweight crown. All right, we'll hear more from Don. Congratulations, William. Yeah, thanks, uh, Let's bring in Joe Cortez. Go ahead. Hey, I wanna say uh, that uh, you know this part, this, this uh, fight was dedicated to my mom and dad. They both here tonight, and uh, everybody back home and everything. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks to all the people here Happy in uh, birthday. Las Vegas. All right, Happy William. Birthday. Joe Cortez, watching this fight it, it became painful might you have let this go on a little too long and why did you let this go on because he's a legend well not because he's a legend you know I gave him every benefit of the doubt he was uh, sleeping some punches when I saw he got rocked a little bit I got close to the action I saw from the first round though when he got tagged with a, a wicked right hand the uh, job he let, uh, landed it was really it really stung him and I think from there on I was watching it real close it was just a matter of time not I wanted to take unnecessary punishment my job is to protect the fighters and uh, I let's maybe, take a let's take a look at that and, and you talk about protecting the fighters this is where he gets in trouble here in the last round you know all these punishment taken on a 47 year old can be very dangerous yeah he was uh slipping the punches right there as you can as you can see right there he see see he's slipping all the punches there the, he's slipping those punches there all those punches are being out of distance they look like he might have gotten punched but as you can see most of them were missing so i'm giving him a an opportunity I saw him. I think when he, I saw he was coherent there because he was bringing, he was slipping everything there and watching it real close. And then when I saw that he took one punch too many, that's when I decided to stop it. And I think now it was, here's the end of the fight, Joe. Right. Just you're keeping a close eye here, as we yeah. can see in the background. Yeah, I'm watching him close. He got hooked by an uppercut there. I think that stunned him there quite a bit. And to me, right then and there, I said, I said, this is it. He's about ready to go. Did he thank you or did he want to uh, continue? No, no, he, no. He thanked me. He said, "You know, Joe, I, the, the kid was too heavy. He was throwing too. Uh, his punches were too too strong for me." He said, "I had trouble with the weight." Okay, Joe. Thank you. Okay. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Good luck. All right, back over to you, Steve. We'll be here with Don King in just a few moments. Okay, Jim. Thank you very much. A busy night for uh, Jim Gray uh, with both the referees uh, figuring in. First Mills Lane, and now Joe Cortez, back here with the fight doctor. Ferdy Pacheco and uh, Bobby Chez uh, pretty uh, pretty simplistic for the fans at home as far as the scoring is concerned Joppy uh, all three rounds and uh, let's just hope doctor that Roberto Duran sticks to his word and does say no boss and calls it quits. I, I, ho I sincerely hope he does but I've hoped I've hoped that he did for the last 10 years I know him very well he's a good friend of mine incidentally before we leave I must say anybody that saw that last replay saw all those punches landing Cortez kept saying he was slipping him and he just about getting creamed by everyone I don't know what Cortez was looking at but I strongly suggest an eye chart test all right let's get a comment from uh, 
two time world champion uh, Bobby Chez uh, what did you think of uh, the stoppage. Well I think the stoppage was a little bit too late but in all fairness to Joe Cortez some of the punches were a little bit glancing not all of them were quite that clean and you know Roberto Duran's a fighter over the years who's taken a lot of punishment has come back to dish it out and sometimes win he's gotten off the floor to win he's, he's done the job for too long at 47 years old though, I think you got to maybe jump in just a shade quicker but you know Joe's in a very awkward position too. a legend in you know in, in anybody's eyes that, that knows boxing it's just so hard Steve it really is yeah. he obviously uh, just gave him the benefit of the doubt there because of uh, who he is and sometimes that can be awfully dangerous yeah they do with Muhammad Ali Larry Holmes too it's just one of those things and look okay. what happened. Okay, now a reminder once again.